Welcome to the Commerce Mentorship Program's online lecture series. My name is Richard and I'm the online tutor for Commerce 294, Managerial Accounting. Today we'll be focusing on Part 3 of Relevant Decision Making, the last section of the course. By now, you should be familiar with the Seller Process Further Decision, the Keep or Drop Decision, the Scrap or Keep Decision, and the Make or Buy Decision. I will begin by providing you with a brief overview of the subject matter pointing out key formulas and tips that you will need to succeed in this topic. I will then guide you through some questions relevant to the course material. This is a good time to test your knowledge and understanding of the subject matter. Pause the video before I present the solution and attempt to complete the question on your own. You will know that you have mastered the concepts presented when you are able to complete the questions independently. However, it is good to remember that you should not measure success on this video alone. Accounting requires practice and the more exercises you are able to complete from your textbook and from your instructor, the higher your likelihood of success in this course. At the end of this video, I will review our goals and objectives for today. Your job is to ensure that you have met each of these objectives and fully understand them. If you have any questions at any time during this video, please make a note of it and speak to your instructor or teaching assistant. Not everyone will initially understand the concepts presented today and you may find that you require some assistance. Do note that this is perfectly natural. By the end of this video, you should be able to systematically determine whether a company should accept or reject a special order, and systematically determine an optimal production or selling plan when there are multiple products, so a product mix or sales mix question. The first question type we'll be exploring today is the accept or reject a special order scenario. In this scenario, we want to compare the cost pertaining to the special order to the revenue pertaining to the special order. Costs include variable costs such as direct materials, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead. Relevant fixed costs such as new equipment that may be required to fulfill a special order or new salaried inspector. And any relevant opportunity costs such as lost sales from reassigning part of your capacity. This needs to be compared to the revenue obtained from the special order. If the costs exceed the revenue, the special order should be rejected. If the costs do not exceed the revenue, the special order should be accepted. Be careful. Sunk costs should never be considered in your decision. In addition, fixed costs that are irrelevant to the special order should also not be considered. For example, if you hire a VP of sales and he earns the same salary regardless of whether you accept or reject the special order, his salary is completely irrelevant to the decision. Let's try an example. Cup of Joe Coffee Co. was recently approached by their longtime client, Billy Fritz, to produce a special order of their Kahlua Roast coffee beans. Billy wants 10,000 bags of Kahlua Roast for the December holiday season. Cup of Joe currently produces 45,000 bags of Kahlua Roast and is 90% at capacity. One bag of Kahlua Roast has the following variable costs. Direct material of $4 per bag, direct labor of $2 per bag, variable manufacturing overhead of $6 per bag, and selling expenses of $5 per bag. If Cup of Joe accepts the special order, no selling expenses will be incurred on the special order. However, because it is a smaller batch than usual, direct labor costs will increase by 10% and selling expenses will also increase by 6% for the special batch. Galua currently sells at a retail price of $30 per bag. The required question here is, should Cup of Joe accept the special order if Billy is willing to pay $17 per bag? Let's begin by looking at the costs associated with this special order. To produce 10,000 bags of Kahlua, we require $40,000 of direct materials, $22,000 of direct labor, and $60,000 of variable manufacturing overhead. Remember that no selling expenses will be incurred on the special order. As such, selling costs become irrelevant when considering incremental variable costs. There are no relevant fixed costs in this scenario. We do, however, have an opportunity cost. We are currently producing 45,000 bags of Kahlua and are 90% at capacity. Based on this, 
we can determine that 50,000 bags is the maximum capacity of the factory. This means that we still have room to produce another 5,000 bags of Kahlua. However, remember that the special order is for 10,000 bags. This means that Cup of Joe will have to drop 5,000 units of their regular retail operations to accommodate the special order. If we drop 5,000 bags of Kahlua from our regular retail operations, we lose out on revenues of $150,000, based on the $30 retail price. At the same time, we would save on the $4 of direct materials, $2 of direct labor, $6 of variable manufacturing overhead, and $5 of selling expenses on 5,000 bags, totaling $85,000. When we combine these two elements, we find that accepting the special order will result in a $65,000 loss, or $65,000 outflow. If we add up the variable costs, relevant fixed costs, and opportunity costs calculated in the previous slides, we obtain a total cost value of $187,000. This is the outflow of cash necessary if we accept the special order. The flip side to this is that we will receive $17 per bag for 10,000 bags for revenues of $170,000. Comparing this to the cost of $187,000 we just calculated, we find an overall net result of negative $17,000, or a $17,000 outflow. Since the net result is negative, we should reject the special order. Quantitatively, it appears as if Cup of Joe should reject the order. But are there other qualitative reasons as to why they may still choose to accept it? Absolutely! Before saying yes or no to a decision, we should always think qualitatively about the issue. For example, Cup of Joe may choose to still accept the order if it leads to a bigger order down the road, if it's for a family member, close friend, or loyal patron, if Billy is willing to receive 5,000 bags this year and 5,000 bags next year, if Billy is a famous coffee blogger who will greatly increase sales through a positive review on his blog, or if Billy is hosting a charity event, and Cup of Joe is looking to establish a good reputation with the community or good public relations. Another decision-making scenario we'll be looking at today is the sales mix or product mix scenario. These scenarios are characterized by multiple outputs and products, and a single constraint, such as limited capacity, limited raw materials, or limited labor. When dealing with sales mix problems, we want to simply find the contribution margin per unit, then the contribution margin per hour for each product. A reminder that the contribution margin is the selling price minus the variable costs. Our optimal production plan will then be to produce as much as we can of the object with the highest contribution margin per hour. When all demand for this product is fulfilled, we should move on to the product with the second highest contribution margin per hour. Let's tackle an example. Tony Derrickson produces three types of cellular phones, the standard, deluxe, and ultra-deluxe models. Each of the three requires different selling prices, variable costs, and machine hours. The standard phone sells at $50 per unit and has variable costs of $20 and requires two machine hours. The deluxe phone sells at $80 per unit and has variable costs of $40 per unit and requires four machine hours. The Ultra Deluxe phone sells at $150 per unit and has variable costs of $50 and requires 5 machine hours. All phones are made with the same machine, the XYZ123A, which has a capacity of 500 machine hours. The required here is, how many units of each type would you sell given unlimited demand? Based on a $50 selling price and $20 of variable costs, the standard phone has a contribution margin of $30 per two machine hours, or $15 per hour. The deluxe phone has a selling price of $80, variable cost of $40, and therefore a contribution margin of $40 per four machine hours, or $10 per hour. The ultra deluxe phone has a selling price of $150, variable cost of $50, and therefore a contribution margin per unit of $100 per 5 machine hours, or $20 per hour. At $20 per hour, 
The Ultra Deluxe phone has the highest contribution margin per hour. We should therefore aim to make as many of those as possible. At 5 machine hours per Ultra Deluxe phone and a capacity of 500 machine hours, we are able to produce 100 units of Ultra Deluxe phones. Therefore, 100 units of Ultra Deluxe phones is our optimal production plan. What if demand for the Ultra Deluxe phone is capped at 50 units? In this case, we want to make as many Ultra Deluxe phones as possible, then move on to producing standard phones, the, fo the product with the second highest contribution margin. 50 Ultra Deluxe phones will require 250 machine hours. As such, we have 250 machine hours left. At 2 machine hours per standard phone, we are able to produce an additional 125 standard phone units with this time. Our new optimal production plan involves building 50 Ultra Deluxe phones and 125 standard phones. This concludes our online tutorial on relevant decision making. Let's review our objectives for today. By now, you should be able to systematically determine whether a company should accept or reject a special order, and systematically determine an optimal or production or selling plan when there are multiple products, a product mix or sales mix question. If you are unable to complete any of these objectives, now is a good time to rewatch this video or complete more exercises related to this section. Remember that practice makes perfect. The more questions you do, the more likely you'll identify patterns and become more familiar with the material. For additional problems, please visit us online at cmp.cus.ca. If you have additional questions, please consult your professor or teaching assistants. Thank you.